Hi there, and welcome to another exciting episode of Agro Business Weekend. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. I'm Joy Lavaran. Once again, thank you. And how is the weekend going? Hope fun like mine. <laughs> thank you so much. Now, if you know you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please now, I beg now, have my career. I beg you. Please do well to follow us on all our social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube channel. That I always say you'll be the first to get notifications whenever anything pops up or anything like opportunities in the agricultural space, anything at all. Welcome to the show. right in time this is agribusiness weekend and um today you know because coco has a very big world market it makes it one of the most lucrative agribusiness that any investor can come in and thrive so what are the opportunities what are the challenges how can you manage them these are many more we're going to be discussing today on the show and um, on set with me is the founder of vds Farms, Jimmy Ajay, thank you so much for joining me on the thank show. Thank you very much for and having me, And thank you, you look good. Tell me you're <laughs> a farmer you like much. this. I can't believe that. I am a farmer, can a proud farmer at that. I am a farmer. See, can you imagine? <laughs> no, just imagine now. A farmer is dressing like this. So we've gone past the age of wearing tattered rags, you know, because so many persons think farming associated with poverty and all those um, stuff. You see, that's a wrong perception. Exactly. And then, I mean, we also encourage that, especially because of the dependency model that we've pushed over the years, yeah. you understand? But the truth is, I mean, it's farming, it's agriculture. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, you can't go to a, to a clinic or a hospital and see a doctor looking unkept and be comfortable yeah i mean for him to attend to you right so yeah. for, with farming your i mean the farmers people producing the food we eat are supposed to look clean and decent as well and not just us the farm owners but even the farm hands the guys working on the farm directly handling the crops and all so, so it's very important a whole new as, as it should be yeah jimmy so let's talk about cocoa farming in nigeria now for an individual that is um okay before i come there okay. tell us what is the economic viability of cocoa farming in nigeria cocoa has good prospects mm -hmm. however just like any business and especially in agriculture and agribusiness mm -hmm. there are lots of um, considerations you just you, i mean you simply don't go into cocoa farming because you had a friend or someone say they made a fortune out of cocoa yeah. they definitely would have put in a lot of work okay. and also there are so many considerations like i said so agriculture Agriculture is science. Agriculture is broad. So before going into cocoa farming, you need to consider the type of seedlings you'll be using, the kind of soil, where, I mean, where to purchase your land or lease your land. And if you already have the land, you still need to do or carry out soil tests, right? To ascertain the, the, I mean, the viability of what you want to do. So for example, if you, you got a land at random and you did not take, take into consideration all these steps yeah. there's a likelihood that the i mean the venture is going to fail and there's also the need for proper agronomist okay. so for example i mean agriculture and agribusiness but i wasn't trained as an agricultural scientist i i mean i was trained as an i mean a, more or less like a diplomat i studied international relations okay. in school right so i can't I can't just go on a farm or on a land and say this is what you do and all those kind of things. When it comes to the practical aspect of agriculture, I make use of, uh, I mean, I mean, of experts, of agronomists. Okay. Yes. Now, so what are the opportunities embedded in uh, this type, this value chain of agriculture? Okay, so um, cocoa value chain is broad, just like every value chain, um, I mean, in agriculture. And it's also not cast in stone. As humans evolve, we discover new opportunities associated with different products, right? Okay. So, for example, with cocoa value chain, there's the primary production phase, and the primary production phase, um, includes um, um, identifying the appropriate type of land to purchase or to make use of um, types of seedlings where to get your seedlings from because the source 
of your seedlings also i mean are also important they i mean they're going to determine in a, i mean um the extent of success yeah. where your i mean how far your your um cocoa venture would go and all these value chains at every i mean at every point of these value chains all all the necessary steps that are meant to be taken are very critical to the success of whether you're going to just supply your cocoa seeds or i mean perhaps supply them to maybe some processors or whether they're going to make it into a chocolate bar okay. you get what i'm saying so for example um there's primary production and under primary production there's um soil test there's harvesting there's pre-production land preparation and all those kind of so steps they are all into one of this yes actually you can you can operate I mean, it takes the bigger players to to be present across the I mean the entire value chain. Okay. The cocoa value chain is pretty broad, just like every other value chain. I mean, in agriculture, value chains are not cast in stone, right? So as 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 humans evolve, we we tend to discover new opportunities around or I mean from these products. So, for example, the primary production phase includes um, land preparation. Um, pre-production activities like um, I mean sourcing for seedlings determining the types of um, maybe pesticides or herbicides to use and all these come come up as a result of soil test carried out so it's the soil test that will determine the amount of fertilizer to use or the particular section of a land or, or I mean it's the same expanse of land right but a particular portion has certain um, I mean qualities. Okay. I mean, qual yeah, qualities, so to speak. Uh, I mean, odd, I mean that that is different from. Uh, I mean, another portion of that same land, right? Okay. So this, I mean, all these little details are important. But if some of us still make the mistake, like, oh, there's no need for me to spend that kind of money, and then they just go into production. At the end of the day, they are complaining that their yield so it means it's not differs. possible to um, farm cocoa on any kind of land. Not absolutely. Although there are the, there's the cocoa hub, especially like some parts of southwestern Nigeria, especially Ondo. I mean, cocoa grows does very well in I mean in Ondo state, right? However, it will grow in other parts of southwest and even beyond southwest. But then, even in the at the major cocoa hub, you it's still important for you to carry out this soil test because at the end of the day, what you need is to get the best possible yield. And by the time you get the best possible yield, that's what will lead to you making enough profit because agriculture is expensive agriculture is capital intensive right so other apart from the money there's the physical constraint i mean the physical um re, i mean the physical exertion as well as the mental exertion so it will make so much um i mean so much sense at the end of the day when you just do it i mean more like anyhow without doing it properly. It's important for us to start doing things properly. And that's where the encouragement will come in. And that, I mean, by the time we start getting enough um, profit, enough proceeds out of these activities, it's going to be encouraging to a lot of youth to want to go into agriculture because it becomes like a, I mean, like a video of a lady that complained about agriculture in Africa not being sexy. Yeah. But by the time we start getting enough proceeds and then agriculture becomes sexy, a lot of our youth want to go into agriculture, not necessarily, I mean, fully into agriculture, but they are probably doing their nine to five, then they are open to investing in agriculture. So that's what happens. All right, so talking about agriculture becoming sexy <clears throat> now, there are so many youths who don't want to get their hands dirty. Okay. Okay, so apart from the production aspect of cocoa that uh, mm -hmm. one can do, mm -hmm. are there other um, parts of the value chains that someone can... Uh, I have opportunity exactly thank you very much so um I, I mean after the uh, primary production phase there is the processing and distribution phase so processing involves uh, maybe cleaning up the i mean ha after harvesting you clean up the you clean up the cocoa seeds i mean you clean up the seeds you clean up the pods because the pods are also useful you can use them in making black soup and we all know what the um beauty industry skincare industries yeah. I, I mean it's getting to in fact as said by 2026 it's been um i mean it's been said that the skincare global skincare industry will hit about 200 billion dollars wow. so that's pretty big yeah. and, and that's cocoa pretty big like major it's it's i mean i mean it's been i mean cocoa is useful for um food and beverage 
um, pharmaceuticals as well as beauty and skincare I mean um, industries wow. so it's pretty useful yes it is useful so to answer your question in the production and distribution it's also broad there's warehousing there is I mean there's sourcing as well as sourcing agents so for example when the big um, global agricultural corporations coming to the country, they all have their agents and even their agents also have like sourcing agents in these cocoa, cocoa hubs. Okay. And then, I mean, there are lots of young young Nigerians playing in, I mean, um, in the sourcing area of cocoa. So um, they have their key contacts of um, aggregated farmers and then they call them when it's time to harvest. They harvest, they purchase from them. And then there's the distribution, there's transportation. And other than that, by the time we now start getting into the phase where we have more indigenous organizations being active in terms of purchasing cocoa or dealing in cocoa, yeah. as well as even adding value, because there's actually, I mean, one or two chocolate companies, indigenous chocolate companies yes. in Nigeria right now. And I just pray that we continue to encourage organizations like that, because once companies or organizations like that begin to grow, it's going to create more jobs for people, especially young people, and not just directly on the factories. Okay, look at what happened, uh, I mean, in one of the major reality TV shows. Some of these indigenous companies will definitely get to a point where they can even sponsor, I mean, add value to such reality shows and even have brand ambassadors and all those kind of things. So at the end of the day, agriculture, as we are right now, we can't be here without agriculture. What I'm wearing, the agriculture has impact in what I'm wearing, where, where, I mean, where I'm sitting, uh, gadgets and all those kind of things. So we're looking at a vast amount of opportunities, not only from cocoa, but agriculture and agribusiness as a whole. And the last um, sector or the last part of the value chain is export. Yeah. So we also have some indigenous organizations okay. like Agro, Agro Ecno. I'm sure you know Agro Ecno. I mean, yes, they might not be as big as the Olams or Barikaribo or Kagil of these worlds. Yeah. But then, considering what they are doing, considering the impact they are making, they are relatively big. And we also have some smaller organizations. So by the time you merge oh. their numbers, all of them together, you will see that a lot of opportunities are bound in cocoa value chain. However, people need to understand that, yes, even as, as young Nigerians, you don't want to get your hands dirty, yeah. but agriculture takes time. It's a process-driven um, sector, right? It's not like trading where you put in money and then you can you can cash out yeah. at, a, at I mean I, I mean almost immediately yeah. exactly yeah. that kind of thing. So you need to be patient, understand the entire value chain before going into it. And even when you go into it, you you should really understand that it takes time. And then you, you probably will make your profit like a lot of money immediately, but you build over time. And it's 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 um certain that over time the money will come in other. If you do it well. If you do it well. If you do it well. If, if you are not involved in unethical practices, yeah. if you don't cut corners, because okay, for example, we've had um cases where people mix different types of other materials into their cocoa seeds and all, you understand? So just so they make weight. And the challenge with this is, by the time someone does put in, put in all the efforts, ensures that the farms align with global, I mean, good agricultural practices, right? And these things cost a lot of money and efforts. So by the time, I mean, maybe a, um, a particular commodity from Nigeria is, is red flagged or blacklisted, yeah, I mean, you are causing harm or havoc to, for other people, exactly. So, that, I mean, those are some of the challenges that the this, this sector face. Although, not only the sector, but we really need to ensure that people start to do things properly. Yeah, so talking about the challenges, what are, what are most of... I know you just mentioned one, mm. like um, um, Nigeria's export product being flagged, but are there others that um, people can take caution mm -hmm. and how can they manage them well right now um i mean it's out there the major challenge is insecurity mm. the major challenge not i mean not only for farmers or agribusiness practitioners but for ev almost everybody whether you travel out of lagos or not the major challenge on top of everybody's mind is insecurity because before it used to be like, okay, we should just have good infrastructure. We can some of some some people even say that we can we can handle power at I mean ourselves. Mm -hmm. But right now, I, I I've seen some farmers where maybe there are a couple of farmers in a particular region 
they come together to grade their roads. They, they collaborate to do some form of um, infrastructure yeah. of, to, I mean, to enhance accessibility to yeah. their fans, right? Yeah. But right now, we, all we are talking about is for, for, for us to feel secure on our farms, not only on our farms, but even from the city to the hinterland, from the hinterland to the city. So these are some of the challenges. And another challenge is the knowledge gap. So you want to go into a lot of farmers, even I have experienced this. Okay. Not, I mean, it's just the so truth. So you're talking about experience. Um. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. So the knowledge gap, you want to go into, um, <clears throat> you want to go into a, a venture, right? Yeah. You don't know so much about it. And then even when you go on the internet, you see a, a number of people, you contact them. And then at the end of the day, you're not so comfortable, right? So, but right now, thankfully, and also due to the, um, proliferation of the internet and social media some practitioners are feeling comfortable to show what they do online and then it gives credence to the sector that okay local or i mean local investors can contact people directly or people who are interested in going into agriculture now have access to people they can talk to even if it's just online because yeah i mean i know a number of practitioners online who whose name are at stake. They know that what they are doing is important and they can't afford to tarnish their name or their, or their brand or their image. So this also gives some form of credibility and confidence to Nigerians in the diaspora because a number of them want to do something in Nigeria. Some of them have made several attempts. They've gotten their fingers burnt. Yeah. However, more of them, some of them are still interested in making sure that they put they invest in the country because when they invest in Nigeria, it also grows the economy. Yeah. Local investors as well, rather than having to just, uh, I mean, um, convert their, their money into foreign currencies and just hold. But at least when, when these funds are released into the economy, it makes the economy active. They are, I mean, it creates jobs for people as well. And I mean, I'm going to take us back to the value chain we discussed. So other than the fact that um, we need to understand the value chain, these activities are also opportunities to create jobs. So imagine, okay, look at Lagos Ibadan. There are several warehouses on that road. Some of them are moribund, right? And the same thing exists in some of these major hubs, even in Ondo State and Etiti State and other places. So you see some of some warehouses where I'm, I mean that are more or less like moribund. So imagine if the sector or if the sector was very active, you understand? If the sector was very active, some of these warehouses will, will be operational. And when they are operational, they'll probably I mean employ more people, even something as that i mean that might seem trivial if, although it's not trivial in logistics but to the layman it might look trivial i, I mean something as trivial as a fork, forklift driver right i mean these are jobs that i mean that will make people earn a living and even cater for their families or even if they don't have families you are driving a forklift and then you, you have a decent income to also move on in terms of, of your career and ambition. So that's just it about, um, I mean, about the value chain. And um, considering the, the knowledge gap as well, we also need to do a lot of research. So when you look at Cocoa Research Institute of Nigeria, I mean, in Oyo State, in, in Ibado, in Oyo State, you would see that that place was created with, I mean, the place used to have a lot of potentials. However, just juxtapose it to some of the, even in Oyo State, in Ibado, right there, there's another organization, private though. Put them side by side, visit both of them. You see that one of them is, I mean, one of them has lost its, es I mean, its essence. You understand? So all those things are not supposed to be. It's supposed to be a research institute where a lot of activities will be coming out of, I mean, will, I mean, will be taking place and a lot of information, really relevant information will come out of exactly. All right, so let's have a short break. When we come back, the show continues. Make sure you don't go anywhere.
Solid Agro Business Weekend. Thank you so much for staying tuned with me. Jamie is still in the house. Thank you so much. Thank you very for much. For releasing a lot of wisdom and information on the set. And I'm so sure that our audience have learned a lot today. So before we went on the break, you were mm -hmm. talking about some salient challenges yes. that um, 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 players in this mm -hmm. value chain can face. Please tell us more. Yes. Okay. So right now, it's going to be more like threat to the, to the cocoa sector, not only in Nigeria, but even, I mean, to Ghana and... Um, Ivory Coast as well. So you see the activities of China recently. They've been they've experimented with some tropical crops like cassava. Yeah. They've not only planted cassava, but they've planted and successfully, I mean, done processing packaged cassava properly. So the same thing is happening with cocoa already. So I mean, of course, what they, I mean, they are trying to build their country. So it's left to us to also build us. Right. So what they did was just to get some agronomists from, I think, Ghana, and then they took them to China over, the, over I mean, over a couple of years, and they've successfully planted cocoa and harvested cocoa. So what I mean, right now, what's going to happen is that cocoa from China would also compete in the international market against cocoa from Nigeria, Ghana, or Cote d'Ivoire. So what this tells us that not only on the part of government but even as individuals whatever we can do to influence policy makers you understand so that's why i want to appreciate what you're doing thank you very much because i believe that one way or the other some of your work will get to the right place and then hopefully yes. hopefully i mean um proper or adequate um, decisions will yeah. be taken and then not just to take these decisions but to implement these decisions and ensure that the right things are done across, I mean, across both. All right, so thank you so much, Jimmy. Thank you very so, much. Um, yeah. I know you um before we go, mm -hmm. before you will allow you to leave the show, <laughs> let's have some fun with you now. Come on, right, my audience. Is that so? <laughs> Alright, so um Jimmy, I have 10 questions on my list. Okay. So um I would like you to um, pick three questions randomly. So let's have fun before you go. Let me get your first number. Um oh dear. Question 10. Number 10. Why do people always run to number 10? Somebody needs to tell me that. Okay, tell us, what is the most embarrassing moment of your life? Who? Oh, I mean, I have a number. I'm, in fact, I have a lot. <laughs> I've, I've got a lot. Seriously? Well, um, oh dear. And I'm, I'll, I'll have to, I need to answer this question, right? You need to answer this question. But it's going to add to the list of embarrassing moments, <laughs> if I should say okay, one of them. Okay, you have to pick one and let us know, so we can learn from it. Anyway, <clears throat> okay, let me see. Okay, um, so years back, I was, I mean, this thing don't make sense. So. Anyways, the same way you're looking at me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, as I was a teenager, like, like I mean, me, like maybe 16 or 17, you know, as a young child, you still be feeling like, oh, you've grown mm -hmm. and all this kind of thing. So it was in front of church and I was climbing like the flight of stairs and I slipped. Okay. So I slipped and there were some, you know, girls. Oh my. You understand? So, right? well, I was crushing on one of them. Can you imagine? And you slipped. Oh my. And I slipped. So, and the funny thing was, they came like, oh, sorry, sorry, and all those kind of things. But I was embarrassed, and I just walked away. <laughs> I, I couldn't even look at them. I just walked away. So, how, after that day, how, uh, what did you tell the girl how, when you see the girl? But luckily, we never got to the point where I would talk to her that I had a crush on her or something like that. But that. then, everything just, I mean, <laughs> disappeared like they all, that. They don't really have to die. <laughs> all right, so, Jimmy, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> all right, so, Jimmy, let me get your second number. Question one. Number one. So if you have an opportunity to sing your first song, what should you sing? So I'm trying to say, Jimmy, sing us your first song. Oh uh, well, not my best song, but a song that um, has been. I mean, I've been humming recently. I mean, like it was more or less like my December kind of song. This um, okay. whiskeys and Tim's um, okay. essence song, right? Oh wow, well, okay. Yeah, yes. especially yes. that. I mean, I, I I particularly like that. I mean, Tim's. Um, 
part. Uh, uh, you don't need no other body. Oh yeah. You oh don't yeah. need no other body. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And all. yeah. So I, I like that song. I feel like doing your DJ. <laughs> 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 all right. That's yeah. nice. Let me get your third number. Um. Five. Number five. So Jimmy, I want you to say a parable in your dialect and give us the meaning. In my dialect, that's Yoruba. <clears throat> well, I'm partly Yoruba, partly Delta, anyways. Um, Igiko Daboshi. And what that means literally is um, a tree. One tree cannot make a forest. Mm. So, for example, you are doing exceptionally well right now at what you're doing. However, you're not the only one involved. You are like the face, you are who people see, but then there are also a lot of people in the background. So it's more or less like a teamwork you get. And then um, with that kind of thing, it also goes to, I would also want to implore, or I mean, Nigerians as a whole, especially Nigerian youth that, um, I mean, yes, we have leaders, but we are all leaders in our respective yeah. spaces, you understand? When you wake up in the morning, as little as, um, ephemeral as it might sound, you wake up in the morning, you lay your bed. All these little activities are what goes on to build your leadership traits. You understand? It, those are the little things that make you become responsible person or people in future. So we all need to work together as leaders. We are all leaders. The bus conductor is also a leader in his own right, yeah. as long as he's yeah. CEO of a major bank. So we all have roles to play to make the country a better place. You know, in my inner eye, I see that, is that you're a dancer? You like to dance? No, I don't oh, not dance. Oh, don't like you. I go, I... Um, you guessed wrong. I'm not, like, I'm not, I'm not going to allow you. <laughs> I'm not going to allow you tell me to stand up because and dance. Because I just told you, can you give us a dance step, you know? Well, unfortunately, I didn't come with my dancing shoes. Uh, oh, so. are you so there's a dance issue. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Jimmy, thank you so much for coming to the Advertising yeah. Show. We had a lot of fun with you. And um, come here from Ireland, I really miss you. Oh, wow. Thank you for okay. this package to say thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Joy. And I mean, I'm truly grateful for this. I'm sure I'm going to frame it or whatever it is. I'm going to and sure to keep yeah. it so Not even my yeah, when you check inside this bag hey, hey, you know that we have packages for you oh, fantastic packages. fantastic you fantastic oh wow okay nice yeah, yeah. nice he okay just the key to the house. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the key to my mansion <laughs> All right, guys. All right. Thank, thank you, you so much once again for um, being on the show with us. Thank you so much for coming along and thank you so much for staying tuned with me. I'm so sure that you've learned a lot from today's episode of Ali Business Weekend. And I hope you will next time. Please do want to follow us on all our social media platforms and please click that red button over there. If you know that Ali Business Weekend has an impact to, to your business life, please click that button over there and click on the notification button too so you can be notified whenever anything pops up on the show. I'm Jenna Brian and you have a great weekend.